Hello, welcome to Ro Robocon 2021. My name is Tatualta, and I'm here to talk about the Python Lib core. And I have been working in testing about 20 years. In the past 10 years or so, I've been focusing test automation on infra test automation infrastructure related activities or test case development. And currently, the past three years or so, I have been working in F-Secure as a senior software developer in tests, which is a fancy title that means that I write test automation infrastructure code. I maintain our test infrastructure, and I now and then write test automation. But my main focus is to drive the test automation forward with different kind of stuff. And I have been also, I think, active member in the Robot Framework community the past 10 years or so. I started with Robot Framework and Selenium library, and then I moved to maintain the Selenium library like five, six years ago. And currently I'm working actively in the browser library development as a core one of the core developers between the other guys. And Python lib core is also used in the browser library, also in the Selenium library. And if I know that it is used in a few other libraries, but why Python lib is actually core? Cool. For that, you have to understand Robot Framework Library API. Robot Framework Library API has actually three different kinds of APIs. There's the static, which is relatively easy to use. And it's very well fitted for the small size libraries. That all methods that do not start, do not start with underscore are keywords. And that's it. Robot Framework does everything else. It takes care of the running of keywords, discovering of keywords, discovering the arguments, documentation, and stuff like that. Then there's the dynamic library API, which is in the far other end. Now the robot framework just imports library and then calls specific API methods out of your library to discover the keywords, to run your keywords, get the keyword documentation, and so on and so on and so on. What it, what, the same stuff that, that, that it does in the static library API, but instead of discovering, it does calls methods out of your library. And then there's the third one, which is a hybrid library API, which is kind of more in the middle or more perhaps in the static library API. It has one API method, meaning get keyword names, which meaning that the library is responsible with returning the keyword names but Robot Framework does everything else. Running, discovery, not discovery, but arguments, documentation, and stuff like that. So there are three different kind of APIs. But I think most of the people are, are familiar with the Static Library API, but what are the benefits of the Dynamic Library API? Well, there are multiple reasons. In Dynamic Library API, there's more freedom for the keyword or the library builders that what things are exposed to the robot framework site. What are the keywords exposed? Perhaps you want to do some outer formatting for something, argument conversion or something, blah, blah, blah. That may be difficult in the static library API. But because you are in the control in the dynamic library API because of returning arm hands and keywords on documentation, that's relatively easy to do in the dynamic library API. And also it, it is easier that you, when your library is divided in classes or it's in, in a single class or in a, or some other container, it is easy to build a public API for other users to develop on top of the library. So it allows the mark that these methods are actually public and the subset of that may be keywords. And then there's private vendors. So that's things easy. And some functionality may be easier to build. For example, selling library or browser library, run on failure functionality is really easy to build because you are control of running the keyword. So if there's exception, it's easy to catch this expression, then call the code that does the run on failure thing and then raise the exception. Really simple stuff. But then there's of course downsides. It is actually quite a lot of work just to obey or play nicely with Robot Framework Dynamic Library App. You have to actually write a lot of code if you want to get the library documentation, arguments, and stuff like that working nicely with Robot Framework. So, and the benefits may be small. Of course, you get benefits by, by having more control, but it's still that it doesn't 
bring benefits for your immediate users, perhaps. And also, I think the user guide is a little bit vague on the matter. So, but I feel the pain also in my heart because I use this Python lib core to learn about the dynamic library. I sort actually write some pull requests for Robot Framework core to enhance the documentation so that it would be easier to understand. And but there's a solution. There's the Python lib core to rescue. And why Python lib core is cool because it it works as an intermediate layer between your library and the Robot Framework core. The basic idea is pretty simple. You have to use the keyword decorator from Robot Framework to mark your keywords with the keyword decorator. And then you must feed the classes that implement your keywords or class instances to the Python lib core so that it can do the discovery and communicate with Robot Framework. But those are the only two things that you have to actually do. So it has very simple API, but there are some restrictions, but you get more freedom. You get the benefits of the dynamic library API. And with the browser library, it has proven, and also with the Selenium library, it has proven a really useful thing to have. But let's, let's look some code examples so that the issue will come more clearer. And here's the code, or here actually is test. I have three different kind of tests with this. One for the static, it has test for keywords. There's a hybrid, it's basically the same. Expect it tests that one something should not happen and it has a different library import. And same for the dynamic. It's the same as the hybrid, but it just imports the dynamic library. And then it's the static library. It's a class. Everything is in a single class. And static library, everything that is a method and does does not start with underscore is some method. So init is not a, or is not is a keyword. Init is not a keyword. So it joins string sum wait join string, but this waiter because it starts with underscore is not a keyword. And here are three different kind of keywords. There are these string stuff, join string and join string with separator, and it. Join string, string with separator relies on the class instance attribute. There's a sum that basically calculates the sum of the two values. And then there is wait something to happen, which relies on the keyword methods and this internal waiter method to do something. Really simple. And it's fine. This is really the base usage of the static library API. Everything is small, condensed, and it's easy to use. You don't actually need or care about extra things that are bring bring for you in the dynamic library API. But imagine that if you would have 100 keywords, like browser library or Selenium library, then this single class would be really long and really painful to read. So you would want something else. And perhaps your first choice would be because the hybrid library API is simple. It has just this get keyword names methods that you have to obey. And it's easy to do. And then you can divide stuff into these separate classes. And this is easy to unit test. There's no pain. But then there are these other classes that rely on something else, which is not available in this class. So it comes harder unit test. It is possible with mocking and stuff like that, but it, it is harder. And also, for example, if you have keywords that rely on another, a lot of stuff that is not available in your in your class where you have these keywords. So it comes harder to unit test. Yes, you can still accept the test, but it's you don't want to accept and test everything with robot because unit testing is easier. Perhaps it's getting some error scenarios or stuff like that is hard with acceptance tests. But it works. The static library works because everything is in single class. Everything works, the tests. Also the hybrid works, even though the ID complains, tests do work. That's the hybrid and join strings comes from the hybrid library and it works. Gala is big, yeah. But then, what about if you would like to use the 
Dynamic library, library API, and you would like to use the Python lib core. So first of all, as I said, you would need to import it. Robot lib core import Dynamic core, and you want to, you need to inherit Dynamic lib core. Easy stuff, and then you want a list of your classes, instances. So you want your calculator and you want to be an instance. And let's do this trick because you want to share the state between the other classes that's implement your classes. And then use the string tools. Self, I missed the comma, comma, and waiter. And, oops, self. And then, final core init self instances. <clears throat> and that's it. That's the, all the stuff you need to do. Oh, we can, we don't want that one. We can delete. We don't need that one anymore. And everything else is taken care of them by the Dynamic Library API. But there's still stuff. Well, let's try. Does it work? Dynamic, there. No, something is missing. What is missing? Trace back, da 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 da. Oh, uh, it doesn't take the, yeah, okay, let's fix that. And let's fix that by creating something common. I have this base, class, let's call it base. Let's have it init method. And let's call that argument that we can take in as a context. You can name it as you want. It doesn't have anything to do with Python lib core, but CTX, and that's it. And now in the calculator from base, oops, import base, not that base, but that base. And then, and not that base, but that base. And now, because we inherit the base, it takes a care of that argument handling stuff that is fails here. So let's try. So the calculator should now work. Everything didn't work. But where's the some Oh it didn't not work. Why it did it not work? Let's look from the Oh because the other the other things failed also. I did forget to fix those. Okay, let's fix those quickly. String tools. Because the library wasn't ready. Base. And waiter. Base. Let's try now. There was pass. I did see pass. Yes, join strings. Some values did work. But not everything did work. Let's look more closely why. Wait, something would happen. Oh, well, let's look at this. Separator. Separator failed because it doesn't have that argument. It doesn't have that attribute separator. So let's fix that. And remember, we did create that base. And what is base? Here it says, base takes in or the dining library instance. So the instance has this separator attribute. So we can do this. Remember, context, separator. And now ID doesn't anymore complain. 
That's really cool. Did it work? Join wind strings with separator. Yes, it worked. Everything worked fine. But that made for something doesn't yet work. We need to do the same trick. And this is not a cool thing that the keyword methods are available in the public API of your library, in case in the dynamic library. So calling your dynamic library library and calling method out of those is available. So you can call it like this. And context. Does it work? That should work. Hey, everything did work. Is everything green? Everything is green. And now, so what we did gain out of this? Now you have this context object, which allows you to access, which is the main library class instance, and it allows you to access the other med other keyword methods in your library. So that if you want to call keyword in your in your other keyword, that's can be run, done through the context or the main library instance class. That's the way Selenium works. That's the way browser library works. That if you want to call something other keyword inside of your own keyword, easy thing to do. And it's also with the attributes, because it, this is the class instance of the dynamic library I here. It's same way available. It's out of those API. And also other methods out of that. If you if I would write other methods in that main library instance, it would work. You would get access to it. So it, it's easy way to distribute. And now it's also easy to unit test because you can mock this single instance in every every unit test that you have, and then you're done. And you could write, base doesn't have to be this bare burn. For example, if you want that def, what was it? Oh, no, I did forget. Separator. Def separator self. That property is better. Return self context blah separator. And then you can use, instead of having this kind of thing, now that works. So you have these kind of wrappers. You can wrap the methods that you're using kind of a lot, and everything just works quite nicely. So less codes to write. So the base class kind of comes your thing or object that everything flows through, and it's easier to use and mock. And this is easier to write methods, met stuff that you use everything. For example, you want that locking, like or something else that goes there. And then, of course, there's in how that run keyword. This is about the how you run the do the run on failure. Name args was it keyword args, yes. Except, and now we're going to do a dirty thing, and then code here for and then trace. Oh, that works. That is actually the run on failure function in browser library and in Selenium library. And next, it is time to go to the questions. There are more than deep dive, but perhaps it's time to ask from the audience what they want to know more about the Python lib core. Thank you, and let's see you in the questions. Hey, welcome to Robocon. Welcome back. Thank you. So, Tato, I always ask speakers this. When you're watching back your session, is there anything you wanted to add because you had such a short amount of time that you think people need to know about as well? Uh, of course, there's a lot of stuff, but there's always limited time. You have to choose 
yeah. what you can share and what is the most important thing that you want to say. Cool. Right, so our first question is from Mikkel wants to know, would running keywords in a dynamic library be faster? No, I think they might be tiny, tiny bit slower because there's a certain amount of wrapping that happens. But I, th in general, they are same speed. Next question is from Slido. Marcus wants to know. Is Python libcore its own module or is it part of robot framework? It is its own module. You can install it with a pip, and it's available from the GitHub and PyPy. Next question is from Jagan, wants to know, which of the libraries are fast? Is it static or dynamic or hybrid, or does it depend on what code, code we use right in it, or what, what code we write in it? It's, Becca would be actually more better to answer these questions. I have never measured, but I think it more depends. Like for example, for the browser library, it takes so much time to communicate with the browser. So the time difference is meaningless if there's a one. So if you want a more accurate answer, go ask Becca. <laughs> all right, next question is from Manny. Thank you, Manny, for all your questions. Uh, Manny wants to know, in your example, for the dynamic library, would you then import the base class in your .robot file? Uh, no, you wouldn't. Base class is kind of like a class that you use to share common things in your classes that implement keywords. But you would import the, in my example, I call it dynamic library, but you would import the main class that you want to name your library of which in my case was a dynamic library. Silly name, I should have think something better. <laughs> cool. All right, next question is, any thoughts on the naming? Is it's Python libcore in pip and robot libcore in the import Python side? Yes, it is, and we made we made horrible decisions when we made that uh, that Python lib core, and we changed names and we for did forget to unify the names when we did release the package out. And now it's a little bit difficult to change, but yeah, most likely that should be changed so mm -hmm. that everything is has unified names. Good point. Uh, so Rene has a question. Rene wants to know which libs are using Python lib core. Do you know some? And when is it really recommended? <laughs> well, I know that the browser library is using and also Selenium library is using. And then I have, some people have told me privately that in their company they are using that thing. It is useful when your library is big, that you have a lot of keywords, perhaps you want to organize your keywords in classes and then the dynamic library API comes easier to do that division and sharing sharing methods or objects between your classes. So there it comes and help that you can better organize your code. Cool. All right. Another question. This is from Stefan. Wants to know what's the quickest way to move from static to dynamic? Example, see examples of how others did it or check the browser library code or any tutorials besides your awesome presentation? I think there are not other presentations. I have, I, well, I did migrate and I started Selenium library maintenance. I did migrate that from static library to the Python lib core, but because in the same wise, I was revamping the infrastructure and bringing Python 3 support, which in total took quite a long but I don't think that taking use the Python lib core was that big of a thing, but it has been like four years ago. So, and other libraries I have built some scratch, so I don't know. 
but it not should be that big of a thing. It's a more of a thing that you need to think about the architects and how you want to organize your library. Are there any best practices for that? How to organize your library? Uh, it's also a so specific question about your what your library is this thing. In my example, I had three different kind of groups. There was keywords that deal with the strings, so they go together. Another thing was calculating numbers together, and then there was that waiting thing. So there was three logical groups, but but it's totally context specific how you want to organize and which things belong together and which are should be close and which can be far apart in different kind of modules in your library. Uh, Renee has another question. Thank you, Renee, for your questions. Renee wants to know again, do you have a good example of hybrid libraries? When do you want that? Uh, <clears throat> well, I actually don't have. I have used them a little bit in early in my career, but I haven't used them a lot. So I don't have a good example when they would be. Again, Becca did create that library IBM system. So perhaps he has better answer for that question. Speaking of Pekka, he actually uh, answered you with your first uh, uh, call out to him. He said, Selenium library is actually a good example. You can compare version 1.8 static and version, uh, version 3.0 dynamic. So thank you, Pekka, for that. Okay, Many, uh, Jagan has another question. Which library should I use if I load certain files before initiating the library? Hmm. Well, that again depends on the context. It's mainly a question that do you want to do that thing when you initialize your library or you don't, do you want to do that later on perhaps when you call keywords or dust and do you want to cache that thing and it's not perhaps a library API question. It's more a question of how you want your library work and where you want to spend time loading that time to happen. That I forgot he actually, uh, uh, after that question, he said, for example, and his example was <laughs> if I had to load a config file or YAML file in that init. Well, if it's a config file that affects how the library would work, then I would load it in the init section and configure my library accordingly. All right, time for one last question. I'm going to answer with Manny again. Thank you, Manny. As I mentioned, thank you for asking questions. So if your keywords are scattered among multiple Pi classes, your approach would help to centralize and hide the keywords in one package. Yeah, kind of. They are in, in, in Selenium and browser library. It helps me to organize the keys. The same type of keywords goes into the same class. And then they are easy to find, easy to read, and many times same type of keywords share some internal methods which are easy to put in the same class. So it's, it helps to organize again. And then that class doesn't have any extra stuff so that it comes relatively small and easy to understand. Awesome. Thanks so much, Tatu. That's all the time we have, and I will see you in the next uh, panel coming up. But uh, thank you for contributing. Really appreciate you and all you do for the community. Bye. Cheers.